Howdy, this is Anne Flippy Science, we're looking at covalent bonding. So we're going to start by looking at Lewis structures. So a Lewis dot structure is where you show the symbol of the element and the number of electrons in its valence shell. And we can use this to show ionic bonding, but we're going to focus on covalent bonding today. So let's start with a simple example. Um, hydrogen. Hydrogen's in group one. It's got one electron in its valence shell, so we draw it like that. Uh, if we did chlorine, chlorine's in group seven. It's got seven electrons in its valence shell. So we show it, that, show it like that. So the dots represent the number of electrons in the valence shell. Now these Lewis structures are handy because we can show how electrons will be shared when we look at covalent bonds. So let's do some examples of that. So we're going to start by looking at some diatomic molecules, both elements and compounds. Let's start with hydrogen gas. It's nice and easy. So you start by drawing the Lewis dot structure. In this case, it's hydrogen with one electron. Now in covalent bonding, we're going to be sharing these valence electrons. So I'll draw another hydrogen atom here. It's got, another, it's got a valence electron of its own, and we can see now we're sharing a pair of electrons. So we draw a circle around um, both atoms and their valence electrons that they're sharing, and we can see the um, bonds that's forming here. That's the pair of electrons. So when we draw it, we draw it like that, and that gives us our formula of hydrogen, in this case, like H2. This is a diatomic molecule. which is made up of two atoms. It's also linear, which is the shape, which is straight. So this is a nice straight molecule. We look at chlorine gas. So chlorine, group seven, it's got seven electrons in its valence shell. Um, again, we need to fill it this space. So we're putting another seven electrons on the other side and we can see we're gonna share these two electrons here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rub it out, I'm gonna put it a bit closer so we can see where the electrons are being shared. So CL, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now I'll draw a circle around both of the chlorines. We can see we're sharing one pair of electrons in the middle. Um, so we get Cl, Cl, the single line means you've got a single uh, pair of electrons being shared and that gives us our formula of chlorine, which is Cl2. Um, let's look at something a bit different. Let's look at hydrochloric acid. So that's a kind of a combination of these two. So we've got hydrogen here, chlorine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven here. Again, draw our circles and we can see we're sharing a pair of electrons, so that's one bond. So we're getting HCl, then we get hydrochloric acid, written like that. So atoms can share more than one pair of electrons, and that's called a double bond. So we're going to do that with oxygen, and then we're going to show you a, a triple bond with nitrogen. So we'll start with oxygen gas. So oxygen's in group six, so each oxygen has six electrons in its valence shell. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So now if I draw my circles in, I can see that I'm sharing two, ooh, I missed that one, yeah. Yeah. see that I'm sharing two pairs of electrons between the oxygen atoms. So the way we write that is oxygen with a double bond, and then still though that's O2. So now we're sharing two pairs of electrons, which means two bonds, and that's why we do a double line here. So now if I do nitrogen, uh, nitrogen's got uh, five electrons in its valence shell, so we'll do one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And now if we have a look at nitrogen, we can see that we can share three pairs of electrons between the atoms, like that. So we've got three pairs of electrons, the way we write that is N like that, which gives us N2 for the formula. So here we're sharing three pairs of uh, electrons, so three bonds, here two pairs of electrons, two bonds, and here one pair of electrons. Now all these are diatomic, they're made up of two atoms, and all of them are linear, they're in a straight line. Let's look at some different shapes. We're going to look at some V-shaped molecules here. So we're going to start with the most famous one, which is water. So we're going to draw the dot structure first, and then we're going to figure out its three-dimensional structure from there. So water is one oxygen with two hydrogens. So oxygen has six electrons in its valence shell. One, two, three, four, five, six. And each hydrogen has one electron in its valence shell. So they're sharing there. So if we draw in our circles, we can see we've got a single bond going from the oxygen to the hydrogen, oxygen to the hydrogen. So you think the shape there might be linear, but we have to think in three dimensions. What happens is each of these pairs of electrons is trying to push away the other ones as far as possible away from it. 
So what that leads to is these two pairs of electrons are really at the corners of a tetrahedron. So in a tetrahedron you have uh, one thing in the middle, one at the top, and we get a three-dimensional structure like this. So these are at the corner of the tetrahedron. Now for our water molecule, two of the corners of the tetrahedron are hydrogen atoms. The other two, however, they're non-bonding electron pairs, but they still have an influence on the shape. So when we draw a water molecule, the way we draw it is like this, and we put in the non-bonding pairs of electrons at the top to show that they're repelling the other hydrogens down. So the shape is V-shaped, like that. It's not a linear molecule, it's not straight. Let's look at another example. We'll do hydrogen sulfide. So sulfur, similarly, is in group um, six. It's got six electrons in its valence shell. So we're going to get a very similar structure here. So each hydrogen has one, so uh, the sulfur, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then one electron from each of the hydrogens. So again, we draw in our circles. And again, we're going to get something that looks like this. But then we've got the non-bonding electron pairs. So they're going to repel everything away to the corners of a tetrahedron. So our shape is going to be V-shaped as well. It's very important when you're doing anything that isn't linear that you're putting the non-bonding electron pairs because they're going to influence the shape. Let's look at another shape, the tetrahedron now. Tetrahedral molecules you'll get when you have normally carbon in the middle, carbon or silicon. The reason for that is carbon's in group four so it can form four bonds. Like I said, it's at the center of a tetrahedron. So what I mean there is there are in 360 degree space, to get as far away from the middle point as possible with four things, you go to the corners of a pyramid, so say tetrahedral pyramid, like that. So you can see we've got a point here in the middle. To get as far away from all the other points, um, we need to be at the corners of that pyramid. So let's look at some examples. We'll start with methane. So methane is CH4. So we're going to put carbon in the middle, we'll do its dot structure, so it's got four electrons. Then we've got four hydrogens to put around it, like so. So we're drawing our circles for methane, and then we've got one big circle for the carbon. So if we were drawing it in flat space, we would have this. So we have a flat you know, carbon with the four hydrogens. But because the world is three-dimensional, we don't have it like that. Instead, it's tetrahedral. So we have one hydrogen at the top, one going down, one going down, one going down. So we get this tetrahedral structure. It's a pyramidal structure. Let's do another example. We'll do, um, let's do dichloromethane. So CCl2H2. OK. So again, we're going to start with carbon in the middle. We're going to put its four electrons in, so it's dot structure. Now we've got two chlorines and two hydrogens. So I'll start with the hydrogens because they're nice and easy, like that. Then I'm going to put in the chlorines. Remember, each chlorine has seven valence electrons. Three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. We'll draw in our circles, like that. So again, if we were drawing it flat, we would have something that looks like this. But the world isn't flat, it's three-dimensional. So instead, the way we could draw it is have C, C, L, C, L, H, H. So now we can see it's a pyramidal structure. It's a tetrahedron. And all of the, um, all of the single electron pairs here are repelling each other as much as possible in three-dimensional space. Now, we don't need to draw in the non-bonding electron pairs, even though there are non-bonding electron pairs around the chlorines here. The reason for that is they don't influence the shape at all. So because they don't influence the shape, we have four things around there, but we only have one bond, so it's really like they just push against each other equally, so it's like it's all straight. So each of these bonds is linear, but together we make a pyramidal structure, a tetrahedral structure. Let's look at the last shape we're going to look at today. We're going to look at the trigonal pyramidal shape. The last one we're going to look at is the trigonal pyramidal structure, and this pops up every now and then. Um, the most famous substance is ammonia, NH3. So we're going to start with ammonia, so like I said, NH3. So we're going to start with the nitrogen. Again, nitrogen has five electrons in its valence shell, so we draw it like that. Then we're going to put in our three hydrogens, like so, and draw in our circles. Okay, so from here we can see if we drew it in flat space, 
we would have it looking like this. And there's the non-bonding pair of electrons. But again, we're in three-dimensional space. So this non-bonding pair of electrons is repelling all of these other pairs of electrons equally away from each other. So in three-dimensional space, what you end up with is with what we call a trigonal pyramidal. This is where the non-bonding pair of electrons and the bonding pair of electrons are all pushing away from each other equally. So we get this kind of shape. Um, it's like the bottom is a uh, three-sided pyramid, like that. So if we draw it flat, we can see the three sides of the pyramid. Um, that's what the bottom is, and that's where we get the name from, so it's a triangular-based pyramid. So today in Flipping Science, we looked at covalent bonding using Lewis structures and some shapes that are very common. That's it for Flipping Science today. See ya.